procrastination. In today's video, we will finally cover this topic after weeks of me procrastinating it. Specifically, we will focus on the effects of procrastination and we will try to answer the question of why we procrastinate. Welcome to Psyched. Before we talk about why we procrastinate and what effects it has, we should first come up with a definition of procrastination. Unfortunately, this is easier said than done, because procrastination is defined in several different ways. Some people define procrastination as the needless delay of things that one intends to do. This definition implies that procrastination necessarily is dysfunctional. It implies that when we postpone things, we do so needlessly. In other words, we waste time. Others, however, define procrastination in a more general sense to also allow for the existence of active procrastination. This refers to the deliberate postponing of decisions or actions in order to use the pressure of a near deadline as a motivation to get things done. This type of procrastination is sometimes associated with positive outcomes such as improved academic achievement. The key word here is sometimes, as this sometimes also can lead to worse performance. Regardless of which definition of procrastination you wish to use, for our purposes, procrastination can be defined as involving the postponing of an action or decision that could be done now. Now that we have some sense of what procrastination is, we can try to answer the question, what are its effects? Well, firstly, it's important to note how prevalent procrastination really is. In the general population, about 20 to 25% of people report being procrastinators. The prevalence among university students is a lot higher. Research shows that up to 70% of university students report being procrastinators who often procrastinate their studies. Of the university students who procrastinate, about half of them report doing so consistently and problematically. So, given this prevalence, what are the effects of procrastination? Well, research shows that there is a significant negative correlation between procrastination and health, financial well-being, and academic performance. To this last point, Students who procrastinate tend to be more anxious throughout the entire academic semester and are also typically more agitated before an exam. Now, given the widespread prevalence of procrastination and that it sometimes can lead to negative effects, it's important that we now address the question, why do we still procrastinate? To answer this question, there are several different potential explanations. One explanation is that procrastination is linked with certain personality traits. For instance, research shows that procrastination is negatively associated with conscientiousness, self-esteem, and optimism. Research also shows that procrastination is positively associated with neuroticism and perfectionism. Furthermore, procrastination is also often associated with self-handicapping as a strategy to preserve one's self-esteem. Thus, according to this explanation, people with certain personality traits are more likely to engage in procrastination. Another explanation for why we procrastinate is that procrastination is a failure in one's motivation and or volition. In support for this explanation, research shows that procrastination is less likely to occur when someone is intrinsically motivated or self-determined. Intrinsic motivation refers to when we perform a task simply because it is personally rewarding to you. This is different from extrinsic motivation, which involves completing a task because of some external event, like a reward. Furthermore, in terms of volition, research also shows that procrastination is related to decreased self-control. According to this explanation, Procrastination is caused by a failure in our motivation and our volition, which leads to a gap between our intention and our actions. A third explanation for procrastination comes from a clinical psychological perspective. In a study conducted by Engberding, Frings, Hucker, Wolf, and Rist, procrastination becomes clinically relevant if it lasts for more than six months with episodes lasting for more than half of the day and if at least five physical or psychological complaints are present. 
Research shows that procrastination of this kind is related to depression, anxiety, and stress. Procrastination has also been linked with obsessive compulsive personality disorder as well as with ADHD. While the explanations described thus far focus on the individual, another potential explanation focuses on the situational factors. This explanation suggests that procrastination is evoked by situational events. Research on this topic shows that procrastination increases with task difficulty and decreases with attractiveness and plausibility of the task as well as with perceived autonomy. So, why do we procrastinate? The answer to this question most likely lies in all of the explanations provided above. Neither explanation is sufficient alone in providing a complete answer to this question. However, all of them provide useful insights. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Don't forget to ring that notification bell and we'll see you in the next video.